Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Alex Steele. This is part two of the Roman Gladius. It's time for the quench. So the first step now is we're gonna take it into the grinding room. We're gonna use the large grinder and we're gonna descale this piece. Let's do this. So we've now got the scale off the blade. It's down to true material, but it's very rough, and we don't have a profile. First things first, Bailey belt grinder, turn this puppy on. We're gonna profile this thing, rough it in with a 36 grip belt. It's hot, it's really, really hot. <laughs> okay, so I wanna make sure that this thing is straight because I wanna find a way to mark the centers of each of the bevels. Obviously you've got bevels on either side and we don't want it to be kind of off kilter and twisted from itself as it goes along that entire length. So the first thing is making sure that the body of this thing is straight. So I'm gonna sit here and look down and see if there are any major things I can do. Last night I spent a lot of time just trying my best to make sure that it was, uh, that it was straight. It looks like it comes off at a slight angle here from the tang. So we'll see if we can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So I'm pretty confident that this is pretty straight right now. About as lead, but what is going on? About as straight as I can get it for now. Now I'm gonna pull up a little bit of a flashback about what it is that I think of horizontal spaces. It'll trick you, horizontal spaces will trick you. They'll trick you, they'll make you think that they're not bad. They are. You can tell I don't like horizontal spaces. You can tell I have an issue with horizontal spaces. You can tell horizontal spaces and me do not get along too well. We tend to have some disagreements about how we should organize things. The horizontal spaces, it should just be chaos. The horizontal spaces, they like chaos. You see this, that shelf that I made a few weeks ago? It's already chaos. It's already chaos! This lathe top, chaos, horribly unsafe. The floor, horizontal space, horribly unsafe. This horizontal space, is actually the cleanest horizontal space in the workshop. The ground underneath it though isn't. Chaos, chaos, ooh, that's a lot of chaos. Chaos, 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 chaos. I don't even know what this stuff is. There's a drill, there are, why is there a baseball up, oh, yeah, it's because there's this hat. You can get yours at alexsteelshop.com. Chaos everywhere, and I need a horizontal space so that I can lay this down and get scribing. This table here is actually a very, very flat table. However, it's now become a horizontal space filled with clutter. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna clear this off, and then we're gonna use the height gauge, we're gonna clamp the thing down, and we're gonna see if we can scribe a center line down there as evenly and central as possible. Okay, let's see what we can do here about getting a scribe line down there. So obviously I have a height gauge. This thing, this table is pretty flat. There are some spots where it's, it's obviously not flat. There's a little bit of rust right there. What I think I'm probably gonna do is I'll just put two clamps on. We'll run the scribe along one edge, we'll put two clamps on, run it along that edge, and we'll go around like this. Mm. 
So I've got halfway marked up and uh, set up on my height gauge here. I'm gonna go ahead and scribe for a couple inches, two or three inches, then we'll do it again. So right now we have a line scribed down the center. Now we have scribe lines to work to, but we're starting to get pretty close to lunchtime. I don't know where Chef Sam is, but hey ho, we have a second best. We have Chef Jamie, what's up? With, what's up? The, with the golden spatula too, look at that thing. Making some burgers. That spatula is, is, is a little overkill. grinding to do. We're gonna take the sword and we're gonna work on that 2x48 belt grinder. The first step is gonna be grinding in the bevels, roughing those in, and hopefully making everything start to look neat, start to have the bevels we need. We'll turn the belt grinder on and just very carefully, not working all the way down to my scribe line, but leaving kind of 15 thousandths, maybe 20 thousandths of an inch of thickness. I'll work all the way down it and try and make this thing straight. So the grinding on this is going pretty well. I'm trying to work to the scribe line. I started at a more obtuse angle, but now I'm bringing it back down, approaching having a center line, the center line of our blade established between the two bevels. It's going pretty well. The trick seems to be take your time, do a little bit at a time, make sure that you're working to the scribe line so that we keep this edge as straight as possible. Super handy having uh, put that dicom on there and scribed it. Really, really important to do that, it certainly seems. So I just work a little bit at a time up to the edge. Now because this is a gladius, because it has that shape, I'm constantly having to change the angle. The angle here to the edge is very different to the angle from there to the edge. And you can be cognizant of that. Very, very difficult, especially while we're establishing the angle, because you're working from nothing. Once the angles are set, you can work to that angle. But when it's just different facets, it takes some time to have everything lined up where you need it. But hey, the trick seems to be a little bit at a time, not going too far too fast with anything, and uh, really observing the work, watching it develop, and trying to decide what you need to do to fix what you, blah, to fix the mistakes you're waiting on, blah to fix the mistakes you're making. Okay, so I have the bevels roughed in. I'm happy with how all this is. This is now ready for heat treat. We're not all the way there, but I want to leave it thick so that we have as much support as possible when we do get to the heat treat. But before we run into the fire, we're gonna get a better little transition here from this thing into the tang. Okay, we're ready for the heat treat.
So we're now going to light the forge, and we are going to let this heat up, and once it is, uh oh, phew, it almost went out, we're good. Once this forge is hot, we're going to put a piece of steel tube in there. What that's going to do is that's going to mean that we even out all the heat, we don't get any hot spots, and then by painting it back and forth in the forge, I should be able to get as even of a heat as possible. I don't need the forge to be very, very hot for this, but we do need to put some heat into all the refractory. So I'm going to open these up and let the flame run as normal now until it's up to temperature. Then we'll close them back down, bring down the temperature of the forge. That's going to mean that we get the right temperature for the hardening. So here's the tube that I use for my heat treat. We'll poke that in there, create a little gap on that side, enough for the sword to slot into. And then once that thing is up to temperature, the sword is going to go in. And though I did normalizing cycles yesterday, I'm going to do two more full normalizing cycles, heating it up to a critical temperature, 820 degrees Celsius for this particular material, letting it cool down in still air. We're going to do that twice before we go into the heat tree. So the steel that we're using, 1055, doesn't have anywhere near the same carbon content as the steel that we use for the Damascus. Now, as far as I understand, that's a very good thing. It's going to still allow us a lot of flexibility and suppleness that we definitely want in a sword. But the worry is, is that we don't get it hard enough to be able to hold a keen edge. So what I'm going to do here is I'm at the Bailey band saw and we are slicing off a slice of the exact same bar. The oil that you usually see me quenching my blades in is an oil that's equivalent to Parks 50 oil, which is a very fast quenching oil. Now, you use oil for a lot of knife steels because you want it slower than water, so you don't crack it. Now this, however, is a low enough carbon steel where we could water quench it and it should be just fine. Oil, however, would have the advantage of being a little bit of a more stable quench, allowing the blade to have a little less chance of cracking, but that comes with the trade-off of maybe not getting hard enough. So with this particular sliver of steel, we're going to heat that up to the same temperature that we're going to heat up the sword, and we're going to quench it in this fast quenching oil, and we're going to see, does it get hard enough? If not, we've got to fabricate up a tube to hold water, and then we'll have to do the quench in water. We'll take a pair of tongs, and we'll place this in the fire, let this warm up, and then we'll give it a quench. Okay, so I think we're almost there. Now one of the really interesting things is that as it approaches the right temperature, it loses its magnetism. Oh, there we go, there's the magnet. So into the oil we go. So it's lost its magnetism. It's hot enough to be ready for the quench. So this should almost be cool. Once that cools down to room temperature, we're gonna test it with a file. Okay, let's see how it goes. This is the piece that was in the saw. This is the piece that we have just supposedly hardened. Oh yes, that file just barely touches it. Listen to the pitch that makes versus that. Here, I can get a full bite on it. Here, it's just doing nothing but polishing it up. That's fantastic. So, I think, I don't know for sure, but I think we're gonna be just fine to go into that oil for hardening this blade, and hopefully we're gonna get one hard blade that'll do everything that we want it to do, and more. So because we have all these studio lights in here, it makes it very difficult to judge the temperature of this workpiece. So we've got that magnet there, and now I can see if it's magnetic, it's not. This whole piece is non-magnetic, but it looks a lot colder than it is. And to let this cool, all I'm gonna do is simply lock this in the vise until it's all the way cool. We're gonna do one more normalizing cycle, and then we're going in for the quench. Okay, time has passed. This has now cooled down to room temperature. It's time for our second normalizing cycle. So into the fire we go and we will continue painting this back and forth until we get a nice even temperature. Same thing again. Okay, so it's completely non-magnetic all the way up to the tip. This is normalizing cycle number two, going into the vise. There we go. Oh, that's hot. Normalizing cycle number two is done. And now we go into the forge for the actual quench. It's still looking straight. 
It can sometimes warp just by normalizing, by getting it kind of dinged and such as you go in and out. But for now, we're going to gently paint the heat back and forth for the final heat, the most critical heat. And this is the quench. It looks perfectly straight. From what I can tell there, this is gonna be just fantastic. I really hope that it's hardened properly. It's almost all the way cool. You see this, that gray. On carbon steels like this, that gray, I believe it's martensite. It's always wonderfully indicative of a correct hardening. This should be just fantastic. Woo, this is fun. I'm gonna gently set this down. So this is now a hard blade which means that it is very, very brittle. I'm gonna wipe this down and I'm gonna show you what I mean by just how brittle this is. Before that, we'll check the hardness. Not a, not a single bit of bite. That is just perfect. That's exactly what you want. No matter how hard I push, it's just skating right off. That's a hard blade. We're gonna set this down here and I'm gonna show you what I mean by brittleness. So this is the piece that we just hardened earlier. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna wrap it in this cloth so that this doesn't become too dangerous. We're gonna set it right there. Here we go. There we go. That's how brittle it is breaks just like that. A really interesting thing you can do is you can look at the grain structure from a hardened break after one normalizing cycle, two normalizing cycles, and three normalizing cycles, and this kind of crystal structure will shrink down. It'll be much more fine, and you want a fine structure for a blade. But you can see just how brittle it is. We can uh, fold this over again and give it another little whack. I'll do it straight on the anvil here. Have a look at that. Into three pieces. There we go. Now that is why right now I need to be super careful. Because this blade, this entire thing is fragile like that. If I drop this, this, this could indeed break. So we now need to go into Grinding. the ring room and we need to grind it so that we can see true metal and we need to temper it. And tempering it is where we then start to get the balance between the hardness that we need to keep a keen edge and the suppleness and the toughness that we need for it not to break in use. <laughs> So we now have this ground up. That's as clean as we need it for now. I don't wanna to do too much, because while I'm doing this, I'm just so cognizant that I could really easily break this. We're now gonna run back into the main room, and we are gonna start tempering this. So we've got the torch set way down low, and we're taking our time. We've taken so much time on this just gently painting it with heat. Okay, we are so close and I think we've got it. We've got this beautiful, ah, oh, it's a lovely dark straw. It's hotter up here where the tang is, which is exactly what we need because we want it to be a little more supple there so that we don't break it and also so that we can then work in that area as we need to. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a lot of fun having you here in the workshop. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. It's been a lot of fun making it. I can't wait to see you on tomorrow's video. And the reason that you should subscribe is, of course, because we make videos almost every day. They're amazing videos like this. They keep getting better. And I want to bring you guys along for the journey. So make sure that you hit subscribe right there. Make sure that you go watch one of my videos that are at, ow, my elbow. There are one, there, there are two right there. Make sure you've watched part one. Make sure if you're in the future, out again, you've watched part three. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.